Hey boys and girls, it is Mrs. Pierman here with another art class or another art project for this week. Um, this is the project that I will be doing with my kindergarten, first and second graders this week, although anybody is welcome to join us in this beautiful project, beautiful and colorful. Um, there are some crazy things going on, this, on in this world today. Some things that we don't all understand or want to talk about, um, but I was feeling that we needed to do a project that was really hopeful and that really showed hope for our world. And I thought, well, what would be better than using our symbol of a rainbow? Sometimes things can get pretty ugly before a storm or during a storm where the skies are dark and gray and there's booming thunder and lightning and it's so powerful. And after the storm, we can always hope for a rainbow. And when we do see that rainbow, we remember that things can get better. They can get better. And I love that thought. I love the thought that no matter all of the negativity that surrounds us, if we can all remain hopeful for our future, if we can all remain hopeful, then I think we can all band together to make this world a better place. So we're going to create some rainbows today because I think we can all use some positive energy and we can all use some love and hope in our lives. So here's what you're going to need today. You may do your rainbows with any type of material that you have, but I'm going to use watercolor paint. I'm going to use those um, and a nice thick paintbrush because I want my rainbow lines to be nice and thick. But you can do your rainbows with markers or crayons or whatever you have in your house that works for you. Um, you also want something to add black with in our negative spaces. So I use excuse me, I used a black marker and you're welcome to use that too, but you can also use a black crayon. You can also use black paint. Whatever you have available will work just fine. And again, for your rainbows, if you have like temper paint or craft paint, that will work too. And then last but not least, I'm going to find something that will go over my black as a contrast. Now you could do that with white paint. You could do that with a white or gray oil pastel. I'm going to, I happen to have one of these at my house. I have a, um, a metallic silver Sharpie that I'm going to use and I like how it gives it a little pop, but you know what? You don't even have to do this um, texture or pattern in the background, but if you do, it really just adds a little extra to your project. Okay, so we're going to get started. This is a little bit of a review for a lot of you, rainbow order or color wheel order, but you know what? You're going to need it for the rest of your life. Color wheel, the color wheel is one of the most important things and most popular things in the art room. So when you get started, um, you can turn your paper any which way that you want to. And normally I would say, well, what color starts a rainbow? And you would say red, but I'm actually going to start with the weakest color. I'm going to start with yellow. So we're going to be doing more of a review of color wheel order instead of rainbow order. Um, but I'm starting with yellow because number one, it's my weakest color. So I'm starting with my weak color. And that means that it probably will stay pretty clean. And I'm going to create four, maybe five rainbows. And you want them to go right off the page. You can even make one rainbow touch another rainbow. So I'm going to, let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm going to do another rainbow behind here. So this rainbow is kind of coming behind this first one that I have. And then I'm kind of looking at my space thinking, I think I definitely want one here too. So I'm going to work with four rainbows and then I'm going to reevaluate and I'm going to see how much room I have. So if I'm going in rainbow order, I could now move to the next color in the rainbow, which is green, or I could go backwards with orange. I think I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to take my next color, which is orange, and I'm going to quickly go right around that yellow Zoop. I'm going to do that on all of my rainbows. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing. And remember, you can pause this video whenever you need to. Do this guy. 
And then if I'm going backwards around my color wheel, the next color, actually, I'm gonna think I'm gonna go like this. That was a little bit weird. So my one, so this rainbow is behind this other guy. And I'm lucky that I did my orange next because I can make sure I know what color or what color goes in front. So anyway, so if I'm going backwards, my next color is going to be red. So do make sure you're giving your, if you're using watercolor paints like me or any kind of paints, make sure you give those paints a good wiggle. My kindergartners go wiggle, 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 and make sure we get all that paint off of my paintbrush. So next I'm going around with red. Do that around all these guys. This rainbow is gonna be in front. And then this rainbow is going to be in front. So if you don't want to worry about all this crazy overlapping like Mrs. Bierman has got going on here, you might actually want to start with red. But I do like starting with yellow just because it gave my rainbows a good size. Um, if you start with red, then you don't have to worry about all this crazy overlapping that I am now worrying about. Okay, but now I'm in good shape. Once I have my red there, I'm all set. So when I'm done with my red, now I'm gonna kind of go, I need to think about what's going in the middle here. So I've got my red, orange, yellow. I need to finish with my cool colors, green, blue, and purple. And I'm just gonna create those arches. Look at your paper, look and see how big are your rainbows right now? Are they big enough? Are they taking up enough space? If you have little teeny tiny rainbows, you might want to think about making them a little bit bigger, okay? Because if I keep them really small, I'm gonna have a lot of empty space in the background and that's gonna be a lot of black to handle when it's all said and done. So look and see how big your rainbows are. And if they're not too big, you might wanna add a couple extra. Okay, what comes after green, everybody? Well, blue comes after green. So I'm going to add my blue next. And I'm pressing quite hard with my paintbrush because I do like those nice, thick blue lines. Or all of my lines. I would like those nice, thick stripes because it takes up so much space. It makes me Makes those colors really pop, makes these rainbow shapes really stand out. And of course, I love the bright colors. Who doesn't love the bright colors? I hope you do too. So once I get all of those on there, I've got my last color, which is violet. And I'm going to fill that right in. So again, see how much you can get done. Um, if we lived in a perfect world, this paint would dry really quickly. Um, it's probably not quite dry all on my edges, but I think it's dry enough for me to start my black. Um, but you wanna just take a peek, kind of decide for yourself. Are you able to use your black marker really carefully? And if you are, you can certainly go ahead and get started with that black or if you like it how it is, I mean, this is really beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful just like it is. So if you like it like that, you could just leave it. Or if you want to move on to the next step with me, you can move on to the next step. All I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this empty space. So unfortunately, I don't have any really thick black markers here, but just like I, I think I've taught most of you, when I want to be really careful around the edge of something, I outline it. So I'm outlining the edge of my rainbow so that I don't get black inside that beautifully colored rainbow. I'm outlining it and I'm going to double it up with my black outline so that it's a nice thick edge so that I can then color it in and fill it in much quicker. So if you're using a skinny little guy like I am, I'm putting it on its side. And I don't know how well you can see my wrist. Watch my wrist. I don't even lift my hand up off the paper. I'm just going all in one direction, 
trying really hard to fill in all of the white spots. I'm gonna just fill in this one section and then you guys don't need to see me sit here and see me how to see me <laughs> fill in all the rest. I haven't quite figured out on this YouTube live how to fast forward sections. I'm sure there's a tutorial out there somewhere, but guess what Mrs. German has been done? I have not found it. So I am not able to fast forward this. So bear with me here for a second. I'm gonna fill in the rest of this. Make sure if you're using Sharpie or any kind of marker or paint, hopefully you have a messy mat underneath you or a placemat underneath you. So you're not getting any of this color on your table. I would certainly not want you to get permanent marker on this table or anybody's table. So please put down a messy mat or a placemat underneath you. So once you get all of this section filled in, you're going to echo the line of your rainbow. And what's the line of your rainbow? It's an arch or an upside down U shape. So I'm gonna take my contrasting color, either white or silver, and I'm going to create some arches in my contrasting color. And I'm going pretty slow so that I have evenly spaced lines. And I can go and add more in a different direction. So I have this beautiful pattern this beautiful contrast here in the background. Now you can also um, add more so that they are looking like they're overlapping, but remember, don't cross the line. So I'm gonna add some more lines, but it looks like one rainbow is in front of the other. Okay, and that, my friends, is how you're going to finish this beautiful piece. When it's all done, it should look something like this. Look inside your little rainbow arches. You're gonna to wanna to get black in there too. And just please, please, please remember that through every hardship, through every negative that we are witnessing in this world, in our own home sometimes, or with our friends or family, if there's ever any negative that you're witnessing or noticing try to remain hopeful and optimistic. It's one of those really important character strengths. If you don't have hope, things can look pretty bleak. So let's all give each other hope. Be kind to each other, spread the love, remember that other people matter. Treat everyone equally and always with kindness. And remember this beautiful symbol of hope with your art project for this week. I will see you next time. I love you and miss you all. Bye, Weedsport Elementary.